All right. So the uh, next talk will be uh, by Giles. So he's uh, presenting the paper of polymorphic uh, vampire, which was a short paper. OK, so um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be talking uh, for the next uh, 10, 12 minutes uh, about uh, change we've made in vampire. This is work by uh, mainly by Ahmed, uh, but I thought I'd present it um, uh, because he had all that work early on in Chicago presenting his two other papers. So, um, so uh, arbitrary slide. So, so I'm going to be talking about our extension of vampire to uh, polymorphic first order logic. So, what is that? So, the first, the majority of ATP support first order uh, logic, which is either untyped or monomorphically. Uh, typed. So uh, we thought we'd want to be a bit different and extend it to um, polymorphic logic. I'll get on to our real reason in a few slides. So this uh, logic is rank one uh, polymorphism, and this is TF1 in the TPT world. And what this does is extends our typed first order logic with type constructors. Uh, so the, the example there, we can say that we've got a list type constructor, which takes one type. And uh, we can now make our signatures of our problems polymorphic. So here's an example. We can have a, a cons function, which is polymorphic in, in its, uh, in its uh, input type. And in our problems, we can now quantify over types. So uh, that's all fun. And so what is vampire? So we've polymorphic. What is vampire? So it's a saturation-based theorem prover. You just uh, heard a bit about it in the CASC uh, results. And we support um, a, a variety of inputs, and now we can support rank one polymorphic first order logic. And if you're interested in finding out more about Vampire, there's some information on that slide. So, okay, so why do we want this uh, extension to polymorphic first order logic? Well, the general motivation is that many applications deal already with polymorphic formalisms, and they have to do some work to translate down into an untyped or, or typed first order logic. Uh, but monomorphic first order logic. And that's work and also uh, the, those translations can make it harder for the theorem prover to solve the problem. So generally that's why we want support in our theorem provers for polymorphism. But why did we want it in Vampire? Well, it's because we've been doing this work to extend Vampire to higher order logic uh, by translation to combinators. And to do this, we need to specify the combinator axioms and without polymorphism, we need to specify lots, and it's annoying. Uh, but with polymorphism, we can just specify uh, each axiom once. And this is crucial for uh, the completeness of what we're doing. So that's why we did it, but we think it's generally helpful. So what's the standard approach to dealing with polymorphic uh, logic? Well, it's to translate it down to typically untyped first order logic. And there's four general things we can do. We can just forget the types, throw them away, and that's sadly a bit unsound uh, for two reasons. One reason is that um, it can, can it uh, doesn't allow us to differentiate between sorts which potentially have different cardinalities. And the other thing it does is it conflates monomorphic instances of polymorphic symbols. So both those things are, are bad. But the next thing we can do is we can add type arguments. So this is where we extend, extend the signatures of functions and add types as terms as arguments. Now this gets rid of our second, our second problem of type erasure where we conflate monomorphic instances, but we still have this unsoundness about the cardinality of sorts. And the two other approaches are tags and guards. And so uh, with tags, we annotate terms with types and with guards, we have predicates which guard the use of variables. And these last two, we can have a sound um, and translation, but they add a lot of mess into the problem, which is bad and annoying to the theorem prover. So what we really want, uh, so, so just to point out here, most of these translations translate down to untyped first order logic, but in Vampire, we've got a, um, a monomorphically many typed um, first order logic. So the translations don't always work directly down into the kind of logic that we'd want. But, but what do we want in a, inside a theorem prover? Well, we want, don't want that clutter, which have tags and types. So we really want to type arguments, but as I pointed out, this is unsound. So what can we do? Well, let's look at why this type of are unsound. And here's a little example problem. I define uh, some axioms about lists and booleans, and that all looks fine. And that's satisfiable, I just defined some things. And if I add type arguments and erase the types, I get this uh, second uh, set of axioms. 
And now this is unsatisfiable. So we went from something which was satisfiable to something which was unsatisfiable. And why is that? Well, the, um, the axioms, uh, they obviously restrict the size of the Boolean sort to the size of two, uh, but because of this uh, cons um, uh, constructor being injective and uh, we've got uh, the difference between cons and nil, uh, we require that the sort of list alpha is larger than the sort alpha. So we get this unsatisfiability about the cardinalities of sorts. And so what's going on here? Well, we forgot the types of the equalities when we did the translation. So this is the problem with the, with the translation, but that's, that's a problem for other people not for people who have a solver and they're doing it inside because we can just remember that information and that's all we do in our uh, inside vampire. So we do a, a translation with type arguments and they remember the information which gets forgotten in the translation normally. And so uh, the type argument translation is very simple um, for TF1. And all we need to do is add these extra checks. So one slide page about what our implementation actually does. And it's, this is our, your four step recipe for extending your um, theorem prover to work with polymorphic uh, logic. Um, but a quick aside, so uh, you may first want to get it to work for monomorphic logic and a vampire, uh, the support for monomorphism, uh, there's many sorted uh, logic, uh, is to just forget about the sorts until you have to do anything with um, variable equalities. So it's just a quality between two variables where you have to have a look to see what the sorts of those variables are and we just carry that information around. So it, extending vampire to uh, the many sorted setting was very straightforward and it's similarly a little bit more complicated but similarly straightforward for polymorphism. So we're going to represent types as terms throughout the internals of vampire so there's a few kind of classes which need updated uh, to be able to represent our types as terms. Um, and then we, with our type argument translation, we have our types as terms there as type arguments. And then we just uh, allow vampire to carry on as normal. And this allows our unification to take, take care of all our type unification that we need to do. Uh, with just the exception of when we have a unification with a variable, we need to do an extra little check where we get the type of that variable and uh, the type of the, uh, the thing that we're holding and just do another unification check. Uh, but generally that's, that's cheap and, uh, and rare. And then we just have to do one more thing. We have to modify in our inferences that work at subterms, superposition, demodulation, to just ignore these type terms because we don't want to superpose into types. And we just need to update our scalarization to consider type variables, just to change our definition of free variables. And we're done. So the implementation to support polymorphism was relatively straightforward once we realized um, the problem with uh, type arguments. So I, just, I wrote an example in because people might not know what this stuff looks like. I wanted to get a nicer example, um, but this is the one I came up with. It fits on a slide. It's difficult to find these uh, polymorphic problems which fit on a slide because as you can see, the syntax is a bit verbose, uh, but for something which is going to be produced by another tool, it doesn't really matter. So this was just a little example uh, where we've got um, some bags and to put a a predicate which says whether or not something's in a bag and a function which adds things to bags. And my axiom just says that if something's in a bag, then adding um, it to the bag doesn't change the bag. And then I've got my conjecture, which says if I've got a, it just uh, tries to lift that notion of in to a bag of bags. Um, and the reason I did this, just to show you the little proof, um, is because we get our um, axiom, which has this type variable here. So x1 is a type variable. And then we're going to create two, uh, we're going to instantiate that type variable with two types. So this SK0 is the scalarization of uh, T up there. So uh, we've got um, two types there. So we've got two instances of that polymorphic uh, axiom. And it wasn't a very interesting example, but it shows a bit of what's going on. It shows what these proofs will look like uh, when you're doing a reasoning with polymorphism. And then what we, of course, wanted to do was run Vampire on some problems to see what happens. So first we compared to other solvers supporting TF1. So there are 538 problems uh, which are eligible in TPTP. So that's not very many, please write more problems. And our number was bigger than other numbers, which is good. Uh, in our paper, we didn't run superposition because we forgot. 
I've now run it and I put the numbers on the slide, but this is 1.4, maybe 1.5 would do better. And then of course, we wanted to see if uh, when we ran on non-polymorphic problems, uh, we uh, remained graceful. And uh, we didn't know much. So graceful as in we didn't um, get worse just because uh, we had this support for polymorphism. So we lost lots of problems. Um, there's a clear overhead to the new implementation, but we also gained 88 problems, which is a little bit more than normal fluctuations. Uh, we're gonna have a look to see what's going on there. Um, but in general, it didn't destroy things completely. Okay, so that's what we did. We extended Vampire to handle TF1. It's available online. It's, it's, so it's currently, because of that uh, lack of um, bracefulness on first level problem, it's in a separate executable and branch, which is available on our website. Um, so this implementation outperformed other solvers available for TF1. And the implementation was straightforward. So everybody else, you extend your theorem provers to handle polymorphic personal logic, and then other people can write lots of problems and we'll uh, have some fun with those. Um, and I mean, we achieved what we wanted to achieve with the work was to enable handling combinators nicely in a higher order version. And we've got partial support for TH1. Uh, so this is a higher order with polymorphism stuff and watch this space on that. So that's um, our polymorphic vampire and I'm very well, happy to take any questions you might have. All right, thanks, thanks for the talk. Um... Are there any uh, questions? Um, so Jasmine has a talk, or is, has a question. Um, can I perhaps promote Jasmine to speak? Um, I think I've promoted you, Jasmine. Yeah, hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay, my wife is uh, sleeping around the corner, so she won't be happy, but okay. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so I was saying thanks for the, the nice talk and congratulations on, on three each card papers the same year. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, it's, it's folklore with superposition, with monomorphic superposition, that the only place where you need a check is when you do superposition from a variable. Because in all other contexts, if your problem is uh, well typed, you just end up, you know, unifying things of the same type anyway, so there's no problem. Is, is that something you exploited or is that something you cannot exploit or? Yes, it's something we exploit, yeah. So we only check this, these conditions when we absolutely have to. And it's only uh, when we've got variable equalities, when we've got two variables equal to each other, or we have to. In the them. left premise or, in, right, okay. Uh, of um, that's in monomorphic. In polymorphic, there's sometimes some extra checks that need to happen. Okay, and and nonetheless, you have because I, I thought I was surprised by your experimental numbers. I would have expected uh, you know something more graceful. Um, so it's basically yeah. those checks so, that cost you. Uh, uh, yeah, there was a point about virtual work with a soup spot a hybrid setup. So now we treat everything um, as uh, polymorphic. So we add type arguments everywhere, uh, which obviously isn't very graceful and. We should probably only add them when we need them, and that's going to make a difference. So, it oh, means that you're adding type arguments to monomorphic symbols, or yeah, yeah. We just oh, add okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then I see. Okay, no, no, that's uh, not a good idea. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, you should just have the uh, when you have a polymorphic type, it's polymorphic in a certain number of type variables. Those should be the type arguments, right? Yes. So for lists, it should be alpha. So nil should be parameterized by alpha. And, and so on. Yes. And in fact, for nil, you can drop the alpha. We have a little theorem about that, but. Uh... Yeah. So Ahmed has a raised hand. Yeah, I might have just said something wrong. <laughs> uh, well, I just know just a couple of further comments on that uh, to answer or to help uh, respond to Jasmine's questions. Uh, so the first one that you were asking with regards to, um, so you mentioned uh, that in the monomorphic case, we the only time where we need to where you take into the uh, type into account is where you have you know um, superposition from a variable. It's very similar in the polymorphic case as well. Uh, so the only really time we take the types into consideration is when you're doing again superposition from a variable. But the difference to the monomorphic case is now be, instead of be doing 
um, a syntactic check that the types are syntactically equivalent, it now becomes a unification check. That's right, it. right, yes. Uh, with regards to the lack of um, the lack of gracefulness, I think a large part of it is due to uh, the fact that, that the version split a long time ago from the previous vampire, so we don't have all the optimizations that the current vampire has. I think that that explains a good amount of lack of grace, gracefulness. I see. Uh, yeah. Okay, so okay, yeah, let's thank the speaker. <laughs>